Right, that's me in my studio. Um, I work in London in Hackney Wick, which is by the Olympics. Um, I make everything by hand. I'm, a port I'm an artist, but I do portraits. Occasionally portraits of dogs. And people, this is Mark Zuckerberg um, in Papier-Mâché. And I use a lot of plasticine. You remember plasticine from when you were a kid, probably. <laughs> so that was, that was a rough for this sculpture, which is of my friend Dawn. This one's made, I usually make a rough out of plasticine. Sometimes I just leave them and, as plasticine, that's all they ever are. This one's made of polymer clay. And that's the real dawn. <laughs> so you can see there's actually not much difference between my... It's not an exaggeration. Um, this is a classic quote. Nature gives you the face you have at 20. Life shapes the face you have at 30. But at 50, you get the face you deserve. <laughs> I'm exactly 50. <laughs> have I got the, sh the face I deserve? I do these um, drawing classes. Uh, well, you just, it's not, they're not classes, they're just in a pub. Everyone turns up and draws each other. They're really good fun. So there's about 10 or 15 of us. One of us sits there for 15 minutes, everyone draws them, next one sits down. These are drawings that people have done of me, which I really like. These are my self portraits. These are, it's kind of classic artists. Uh, portrait artist material. I'm the, the model that is always available. It's quite boring doing self-portraits, but if there's no one else around, I'll try and do myself. I've been doing a few of these iPad drawings. I don't, um, which have, I don't know, pe people have tried drawing on iPads. I, I'm not a, really an advert for iPads because I'm too addicted to paper and pencils. It's what I use all the time, really, but I did get an iPad and I've been trying that out recently and it's, they are amazing. Um, problem is, David Hockney got there first, so brilliantly, in so many ways, as he has done with all sorts of areas of, of figurative art. That's one of his self-portraits. That's the portrait I did of David Hockney. That's a um, Polly McClay one. Um, this is a, a quote by David Hockney. Faces them are the most interesting things we see. Other people fascinate me. And the most interesting aspect of other people, the point where we go inside them, is the face. It tells all. I'm not sure it does. If you saw Harold Chipman walking down the street, what do you think? Nice, cosy co doctor or mass murderer? Would you know anything really by his face? I mean, in this picture, actually, it does look slightly sinister. But um, I'm not sure you'd know just by looking at someone. I don't know how much you can actually tell by looking at someone's face. When there's some disaster like this, you remember this guy who, who, who flew his 747 into a mountain? They, you're all, the, the newspaper is always going to put his photo on the front of the newspaper. And I imagine most people really look at the, the picture of him wondering, can they, can they see any hint? of some sort of madness. Can you see it in someone's face? Or is it, is it, does, he, does he just look like you or me? The Victorians thought that if you looked like a dog, you acted like a dog. If you looked like a cow, you acted like a cow, etc. Obviously, it's absolute nonsense. The philosopher Plotinus questioned having his portrait done. His face wasn't him, he said, but merely his husk. A portrait would therefore be a husk of a husk, an illusion doubled. Do you remember Spitting Image? I, after college, I did graphic design at college, then I worked at a um, publishers for a while and basically got terribly bored working, doing layouts day after day in the publishers. But I knew someone who knew someone who knew someone who worked at Spitting Image and they were looking for apprentices. And I applied and got the job, as it were. And it was a kind of revelation and, and got me on the road to doing what I'm doing now. That's me back in the day with Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Amazing thing. This is probably about 1994, 
1905, 1994, something like that. Even then, he was a figure to, to be um, caricatured. That was my boss, Roger Law, who was great. I bumped into him a couple of years ago on Charing Cross Road. And um, he, I said, you won't remember me, but for the, uh, the very last couple of years I worked at Spitting Image, I, have I even explained what it is? Just for people who don't know, it was a TV program on every Sunday on Channel 4, and it was, a, it was about current events with latex puppets of Mrs. Thatcher, politicians at the time, celebrities. It was, it was very um, controversial, upset a lot of people, but it was a great, fun place to work at. Anyway, when I bumped into Roger Law, I could say, I, the first and only time I should think I'll ever say, it, you changed my life, because he turned up with this program and just radically changed how I was working and introduced me to a, the idea that you can work and get paid for it and have fun. So I made things like this, which were fish uh, that would be sort of weird fish that were in the radioactive Irish sea at the time. Uh, and I went making uh, also a lot of eyeballs and blinks. These, I think, were either Gary Barlow's or Gazza's eyes. I can't remember, but I know, I know at the time it was one of those two. I made the eyeballs and blinks, so it was just little mechanisms. Started doing that and then went on to making the fish and the dogs and wolves and things like that. There were bit parts on the, on the satirical TV program. And the only head I actually made was Rolf Harris. And he was out of cut up bits of other heads. When, when someone like Mrs. Thatcher would have a complete uh, sculpted head made of her, obviously. But Rolf Harris, who was a bit of a sideline character, obviously nobody knew what he was up to, um, was made out of um, the, like the you know, forehead of the Pope and the, the <laughs> chin of, I don't know, someone else who had a beard like that. So it stuck together. And it, so him being a sort of quite an easily caricaturable face, I just stuck, stuck that together and made him. And that's how, what he looked like on telly. That's what a famous image for, from the time that you may remember. Um, and Spitting Image comes from a long tradition of, of, of uh, caricature and satire in this country. It's obviously, the, these things exist all around the world, but it's a particular tradition of it in this country. That's a print by Gilray. So the, the, the Mrs. Thatcher's carving off Britain was, you know, came from that kind of idea. This, is, this was done in 17-something, that print. And I still do a few little things, a bit like this. This is David Cameron, hot-footing it on the beach. <laughs> Boris, of course, has to be done. <laughs> Boris just made himself. It was so easy. I had a lump of plasticine on my desk, made, rolled out a couple of sausages, and, uh, and had a bit of, bit of uh, yellowy stuff, slapped it on the top, and there he was. Couldn't be easier. Just out of interest, that's a young Boris. And this is an absolutely mini bit of animation I did, which is nothing. That's just, you can get a little app on your phone called Animate It, and all I did was just sellotape it to, a, to the a little ruler. And, um, you know, plasticine, which I use, is exactly the same as, as all the Ardman used to do Wallace and Gromit and stuff like that. So it's a cheap easy to use material. I really recommend it just for if you ever fancy getting yourself into uh, sculpture or anything like that. It's a very good, easy way. And this took about sort of 20 minutes. So you can do very quick, easy things that can turn out quite fun in plasticine. The obvious person, of course, is Trump. And I have been asked several times, but I think he's just, he, he's been done too many times and too well. I don't know what I could add to the huge range of, of Trump caricatures. Um, of course, there's Melania, so I did do her. <laughs> and, uh, and their son, Baron, I felt a bit mean about this because he can't help being Trump's son. But um, I, and I hope there's a bit of sympathy in it. He's, he's such an obviously extremely gawky teenager. He was just a bit of an irresistible subject. Uh, Prince William and Harry. Or is it, no, Prince William and Prince George. And Keith Vaz and his rent boy. <laughs> so I do, I, just ideas that are, that are in sort of in the ether and um, I, c I can't resist turning them into mini sculptures. 
Uh, do you know the, the, the political blogger called Guido Fawkes? Anyway, he bought this, uh, this one of um, Keith uh, Vaz that I was, I was very pleased with. It's nice, I don't always sell things. I mean, like, uh, nobody's gone for Baron Trump yet, but occasionally I put something out and, and people are interested and occasionally buy things. Greta, she's uh, obviously, you know, the, the girl or the woman of the moment. I tried doing Corbyn, I don't know, I, I, this was literally just the other day, I don't think it's that great. It's, it's very hard to get an angle on someone like Corbyn. It's kind of, um, to make it funny, I don't think it is really. He's not, he's not a funny person. Whereas Nicola Sturgeon is very perky and good fun. I did that little one of her <laughs> once. I th it was okay, but not that great. But then I did that one. <laughs> which works really well. Sometimes the quickest, simplest ones work out the best. Um, something I love doing particularly is, is workshops with people. The secret to my workshops is basically I hardly say anything. I just give them the plasticines, they get on with it, go round, and if people could say, how do you do noses, how do you do ears, I'm always say, you know, just do it, and then you, you may find out. If you really get stuck, I'll try and give you a hand. But uh, people do the most great, lovely, idiosyncratic work. Pastels, yeah, this is what I'm on at the moment. My dad was also an artist, and like a lot of artists, he bought a lot of pastels, um, because they looked so pretty in the box, I think, but never used them. So when he died, I inherited a vast amount of pastels, and that's the, my, my main occupation at the moment is doing drawings of people. So I put my work on Instagram, people message me and volunteer, basically. Occasionally I'll see an amazing looking person and say, any chance I could do your portrait? Uh, there is no excellent beauty that hath not some strangeness in the proportion. That's by Sir Fran said by Sir Francis Bacon, not the recent Francis Bacon, the more recent Francis Bacon, but a philosopher at the, t at the time. And and that very much goes for the sort of portraits that I like doing. Uh, that's Mick, and that's Tin. So she's a model, and he's a labourer. So what I want to do next year is have a, a show of a very wide variety of portraits. Oh, this is Ishbel Myerskoff. She's a painter. I've really messed this one up. She's a, a painter and um, does absolutely ruthlessly honest paintings of herself and other people. And I did this kind of prettified drawing of her. And she looked at it and said, why have you done that? After, you know, I spent a couple of hours, why have you done that? And I felt such an idiot. But I was so nervous and I really wanted to impress her. And I did the worst thing you can do as a, as a portraitist, which is to try and flatter. Um, that's my old tutor, Ian. So I'll just leave you with my Instagram. So what I'm, I'm always looking for is oldies, wonkies, weird looking people, <laughs> sticking out ears, big noses, all that, all that sort of thing. So if anyone's in London any time, has got a couple of hours to spare, uh, maybe you'd volunteer yourself to be one of my subjects. Thanks very much.